are due. Um, but uh, I start with pre-processing and then I hand it over to Warren Diaz who will talk about Optistruct and then we get back to post-processing. So let me start with pre-processing. The first slide you can see here shows our CIE process if you're starting with a CAT geometry. Uh, in our 12 release cycle we added readers for CATIA CPD data and fiber SIM drape data which can come in through our interfaces. And you can use the material or the information which is uh, included in these two file formats for pre-processing of composite models. Uh, you can use a zone-based composite modeling approach or ply-based modeling approach, which is also supported in our product HyperMesh. Um, once you are done with your composite modeling, you can use various visualization options such as 3D visualization of shells, plies, or visualization of ply angles uh, in HyperMesh, and just verify that your model is defined correctly. Um, at that point, you can either go um, the route of solving your problem with the supported solvers of Optistract, Nastran, and Abacus, um, and you can also go uh, the other route to do an optimization of um, your, your uh, structure with Optistract or with HyperStudy. And with the results, you can use our Hyperview, uh, Hyperview post-processor to um, look into the results. Um, and if you want to go further and you want to look into very detailed um, um, information of your structure, for example, model a very sophisticated material, you also can take, care, uh, you can take advantage of our partner products, which I will be talking about um, at the very end of my presentation. Before I show a little demo, I want to clarify two basic um, definitions of composite modeling. Uh, that is the zone-based modeling approach and the ply-based modeling approach. If you look at this slide here, you see that you have, for the zone-based uh, modeling approach, you have to define a property for each zone. So you would have to define three different properties for this little model uh, because whenever you have jumps in your number of layers, if you look at zone number one to zone number two, you would have to define a different property because you jump from three to five layers, and you would have to define each zone with a different property. And you also have to take care that your uh, layers are stacked correctly, like ply number seven uh, occurs in all three zones, so you have to do quite a bit of bookkeeping to get it right. And it gets even worse if your structure gets bigger and if you have to do modifications like removing one of the layers where you have to address all three properties again just to make sure that this uh, layer is really removed. Um, so HyperMesh supports a ply-based modeling approach which, which is actually way more sophisticated and it's also closer to the actual manufacturing process of composites. There you define individual plies like just you would cut them in, um, in your workshop and you put them on top of each other in a certain stacking order. And that's exactly the, how it works. You define a shape of your ply. Uh, ply number one consists of all elements, but if I look at ply number two, it gets more clear. You select four elements for ply number two, which are defined by, this, by these elements. And so you define each ply by just defining um, a region, actually, um, belonging to these plies. And once you're done with that, you just have to define how those plies are stacked up in a kind of a stacking table, which you can see here. So, um, and then if you really need to remove a layer, it's actually very easy because you just have to remove one uh, layer out of your stacking table. And it's automatically taken care of. Now, if you use Optistruct, it is uh, a solver which actually supports the ply-based modeling approach, whereas other solvers don't. So uh, there you have to define or you have to convert your ply-based modeling uh, approach into a zone-based model, and that is also taken care of by uh, algorithms contained in HyperMesh. On the next slide, I have a little video which shows you in a simple way how you would define a composite model from scratch from within HyperMesh, not considering the CAD door we are offering. So the first thing you do is defining those plies. You see the ply dialog here, and you also see that you can select elements to define the ply shape. You also see thickness, orientation, 
integration points, uh, you can um, select the material and so forth. And what happens here is I select the first layer, ply number one, and I select just all elements here. And now I also select ply number three with a few elements only, um, just to make a little difference. You won't see all plies defined uh, because they're all the same. And what I just did now is I created a laminate entity. Um, in this laminate entity, I can uh, call all those plies and put them into the right stacking order, which you can see in a minute here. So I'm selecting those plies. I could also move them if I wanted to move ply number three up or down or delete a couple of plies. That is all possible. And here you can see the card image of Optistruct, which is the stack uh, card which says how those plies are. That is actually the equivalent to the uh, laminate entity in Hypermesh. Okay, and uh, now I need to assign a property, a template property to my elements to give a basic property to those elements. Uh, in other solvers like Abacus, you would uh, say that uh, this is a shell section or a shell general section. And here it's a P on P for our solver of destruct. Now I'm assigning a material orientation to all those elements. Um, I create the system on the fly and assign it to the elements. And while I do that, you right away will see that the material orientation is shown for a moment. And now I go in a check mode. I'm just checking that the element normals are pointing in the right direction. In worst case, I can adjust them. And once I'm done with that, I can go into a 3D visualization mode where I show my plies in a 3D representation. For a better visual, visual, visualability, I just mask a couple of elements and look inside the structure. I color my plies so that they are um, easier to, to differentiate. And here you can see all plies stacked up on top of each other. I can also look at individual plies and just see whether my ply angles are defined correctly as shown here in this part of the video. And last but not least, this is now a ply-based model, but if I need to convert that into a zone-based model, you already see what I'm doing here. I realize the laminate and that will take the template property which I assigned earlier, copy it as many as times as necessary, and create appropriate solver cards for the zone-based model, which has been happening here. And I also switch to a by property coloring mode in Hypermesh, and you see now that it has been converted into a zone-based model with all the appropriate uh, properties. Here I card edit one of those properties where you see all layers called in the property card, which actually are in that particular zone. On the next slide, I talk about an overall composite modeling process when it comes to modeling with CPD or FibreSim data. Um, basically, the workflow is very, very similar. The only difference is in step one uh, versus three. Um, in, in principle, you always import a CAD model, but in uh, the case of CPD data, it comes in already uh, the composite data, such as ply shape or name thickness material, ply angles, are coming in with a CAD model already, whereas with FibreSim data, you would have to import your FibreSim data uh, from a draping simulation in a separate step. This is basically the only difference, um, apart from additional information which comes in uh, from the draping simulation. But in, in principle, it's the same process. It's the same process. So you import a CAD model, you create a mesh, or you import a mesh which you already have, uh, and then it's time to transfer your your composite data onto your finite element mesh um, by realization methods, which we offer in Hypermesh. And then there are two work steps, like the template property I have been talking about earlier, and assigning a material orientation to your model which also comes in through your composite um, CAD reader. And then you need to review your model to be sure that you defined your model correctly before you either use the ply-based model or realize it into a zone-based model. And then you can export and solve the model. Um, of course, loads and boundary conditions need to be created as well. Um, 
For that, I would like to jump into another uh, little live demo in that case. Uh, you see a door frame model, which uh, Warren and I uh, are using in this demo. Um, and I will just focus on the outer skin where I want to apply some composite data. So this is the door frame model, and um, I have a mesh already, um, obviously. And now I need to import my CAD data. And I'm going through a CPD process here. Uh, I switch my CAD reader to CATIA, and very important, I have to switch to import composite data here, otherwise I won't get the composite data in. And what comes in here, let me just um, hide, let me just hide the shells here and show you what's coming in through the CPD reader. Um, you see a whole bunch of lines. and. Um, it could also be the surfaces, the cat uh, geometry, but the lines which are coming in here define the ply shapes. And this is one part which is coming in, but you see also here all the plies which came in through the uh, CAD reader. And I just open one of the plies here. You see the ply dialog is earlier, but it's pointing to lines right now. And you can also see the line which defines the ply shape highlighted here in, in the background. Um, just to show you a different one, I jump to this ply here, and you see a little ply highlighted here. And that's what I need to uh, transfer to my mesh in the, next, in the next step. But before I do that, I also show you that we got the laminate card filled in through our reader with the stacking information of all those plies. These are all 140 plies which came in, and I could delete plies here, I could move them as uh, as per my liking or requirement. So now I switch back on my shell mesh, and then I will transfer the ply information onto my mesh. This works by just realizing the plies. I right mouse click on ply and say realize, and select the component which contains the elements which I want to use for my mapping. And here I got two different mapping algorithms. One is for FibreSim, and one is for CPD data. And I'm just realizing with a CPD algorithm, and now open the plies again, and you see that this selector now points to elements, and the elements are highlighted. Means uh, now elements are associated with the plies. And just for comparison, I open this little one here, um, and I can also go in and change either my geometric information which I had earlier, or I can just uh, now modify my elements which uh, are in this particular ply. I won't uh, be very accurate here, but uh, I just changed my ply shape slightly and update this particular ply. So now as described earlier, I need to create a property, a template property, and uh, with the appropriate card image. Here it's a PCOM P card, and that's all I need to do for now. Um, I can add some attributes, like if I want to do a failure criterion like Saihu or non-structural mass, offset, whatever I want to propagate if I convert to zone-based later. I need to assign this property to my elements. Just checking this. Good, so I'm now, I now have my template property assigned to the elements. And I was also talking about the material orientation, uh, which I need to assign. So I do that right now. <clears throat> the system came in with my CPD data, so I just need to select that particular system, which is already available. And as you can see, I have now a material as a system assigned to my elements. And now I can go into a review mode. Let me switch off the geometry, which uh, makes things easier. I should check my normals, which I do here. Um, so you can see that one normal is actually not correct. I will just use this um, same normal panel real quick to, to change that. I will check one more time. Now all normals point towards the right direction. And now I can go into a 3D visualization mode and look into my details here. I switched on the, shell thick, uh, the 3D visualization mode for shells and also the ply visualization. We're dealing with a approximately 400,000 elements model, 
and I'm dealing with 140 plies. So there's quite a bit of data which I'm shuffling here, uh, but HyperMesh is, is very fast actually. And if you uh, go a little bit to the uh, to a more interesting point here, you can see how those transitions are done between the different zones actually. And what you also can do is you can isolate individual plies and just look at this ply including the ply angles just to make sure that this is also uh, correct. And once you're done here, I just open my property folder so that you can see it better and once you're satisfied, uh, you can then just realize your laminate and it creates you all those properties which you need to show that uh, to show this same information in a zone based approach so um, that is basically um, the way how you convert from applied to a zone based model um, of course, you could also, if you made a mistake, you could just delete those properties and maybe you wanted to add a new ply. So I could do that even on the fly, which I just want to show you real quick. Um, you could just add a new ply if you wanted to. So let me do this. Um, I just name it new ply. And I add a couple of elements to define the ply shape here. I won't just focus on a particular shape just want to show you the principles of it. So now I just created this ply and I can go to my laminate, laminate entity and add this ply into my stack. Let me just add it uh, right underneath the first layer. So I add this new ply here, press update and uh, switch back to my 3D ply visualization. And if I switch the first ply off, I'm just wondering, let me just switch to my property. And now you already have the, the ply added to your um, composite structure. I switch the uh, outer shell on again so that you see it just went underneath into the second, um, second place here in my stacking order. And if I wanted to, I could just now delete my properties and re-realize my laminate again, and it would uh, take care of this uh, new ply without a problem. Um, one word about FiberSim. If you would have done this with uh, FiberSim data, you would, ended up, would have ended up with pretty much similar process, and on top of it, you would have received a drape table, uh, which would be captured in the drape um, in the table entity in HyperMesh, and maps pretty much thinning factors for each individual element and also angle variations for each individual element. And uh, in OptiStruct, you could right away take this data and uh, run your analysis with, with that without any additional effort. All right, thank you, Chad.